Okay, this time let's predict tradition and let's not forget to turn on my light so I won't be cursing at myself when I'll be editing this. That was quite a strange and boring intro, I should come up with something else. I want to start with two things, the first one is that it is going to be a Christmas video and I still don't have any decorations around my screen but I will add them in through editing. Luna is gonna have some Santa hat and some some Christmas lights all over the place. And the other thing that I wanted to say is uh, look at this microphone, look at it with your eyes, look at it really fondly because there's chances that uh, you're gonna see it for the last time. So here's the thing, I've been procrastinating so much on finishing the videos about my Christmas, not Christmas, about my Halloween project. I still haven't done them and it is the 13th of December already. Now I figure that, well, I've been procrastinating on it for so long, those few extra weeks are not really gonna make a difference. So I decided to postpone that whole video series. I want to make three videos of that project. I wanted to postpone them to January. And if everything goes according to plan, I will have a new microphone by then. And hopefully your ears are going to bleed less from my voice. I'd rather make them properly without rushing them with the new microphone instead of uh, you know just trying to push it out and you know make a half as job with this uh, this 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 here Today I'm going to continue my Christmas Harry Potter series. I made videos about the pictures that you have here, I will just really quickly run through them. So I started this tradition I should say back in 2020 when I made these four pictures featuring different Harry Potter couples Harry and Ginny before Christmas. Uh, it's uh, the 20 2nd of December 2002 and we have Ron and Hermione on Christmas Day. We have Neville and Hannah Abbott in 2010 when uh, they were both working at Hogwarts. They are taking off the decorations from the main hall after Christmas and then uh, we have New Year's Eve with uh, Rolf Scamander and Luna Lovegood here. I fixed up a few things on these pictures in 2021. I'm still not really happy about how they look but it is what it is and then I made two new ones for 2021. These two pictures tell one story. These are Lavender and Parvati who are about to throw a Christmas uh, get together and the clock and the note shows that they are seven minutes before waking up and the guests will arrive at 5 p.m. and if we look at the other image we will see that it is seven past after they arrived and we have Seamus and Dean and all the others in the reflection. The room feels a little bit empty like I even recognized it back then. Maybe I will, I don't know, make something similar to this one year with multiple characters and you know that will be the, the definitive giant Harry Potter Christmas painting of my life or something <laughs> along those lines. Lassila only made one with Cho and Cedric. I had quite a lot of fun with making these uh, outfits, you know, the bronze and blue for the Ravenclaw outfit and the yellow and black for the Hufflepuff outfit. And uh, you might see a pattern here, <laughs> you know, I started with four pictures, continued with two. There was only one last year. Well, if I continued this pattern, then this year's challenge would be cut pretty short. I want to make one picture this year as well and make it as uh, nice as I can. And this picture is going to feature George Weasley and Angelina Johnson. I actually painted both of them before. This is uh, from December last year when I made this uh, quick comic strip featuring George and uh, a few months later I made this one uh, of Angelina. This is actually still a series that I haven't finished so we will look back at it sometime in the future and wrap this one up as well. Now I'm still not entirely sure whether or not I should stick to the one by one ratio like all the other pictures of the series were 
one by one ratio. Nowadays I am always painting in 4x5, that, that's like the ratio that I found to be the best for myself. But right now what I really want is uh, I want to do a few sketches of them standing together and then later I will explain what I want this uh, little story to be. Let's just say that it is uh, George and Angelina after the events of the last novel when Fred was already dead. You know the story that I was referring to with this little comic strip. I have a really specific idea that I want to sketch out. I want to play around with it a little bit. Let's get into it before I fill up my hard drive with this recording. Since the most important part of this entire picture was the interaction of the two characters, I started by sketching out a few versions of their pose. I tried the different angles, I tried them facing towards each other, away from each other. I tried making a version where they both uh, are seen from the profile view. While I wanted Angelina to always look at George, I wasn't sure if George should uh, look down into the snow or up the sky or, uh, you know, back at Angelina. But I, I eventually decided that uh, I, I wanted to pick out three of these poses and, and uh, work a little bit more on them and just uh, see whichever of the three is going to be the best. Now as I look back at them, there is one version that I scrapped. It was the one where George is sitting and Angelina is uh, standing uh, right next to him. Just that one had a little bit more dynamic posing. I'd say the only weakness of that one was the less linear nature of the entire story that I will present on the picture in the end. But there was some issue of a completely different kind that is coming up right now. Okay, sorry for the pause. Uh, you might see a little bit of an issue here, like a little certain sense of my face in the corner there. Well, that's because my internet provider decided to go on vacation, let's just say that. And uh, of course my webcam, that is technically a smartphone, is connected to my PC through the Wi-Fi. So it's unavailable for now. So uh, let me just put my, where is it? My trusty old avatar there. So yep, that's it. We are uh, continuing with the sketches. Now at this point uh, you will see that I did this uh, thing that I learned from Boro Dante or Boro CG if you know him by that name. It is the method that he always called the search where you start with a silhouette with a few color spots and then you can do a sketch on top of it if you want or you can continue it uh, just with your color spots. But I'm going to say that this was like uh, pretty much the abstract uh, color spot version of the best uh, things that I wanted to combine from all the pictures. So I was more like looking for how the mess is going to go based on the sketches and the different variations that I tried out by that point. And uh, spoiler alert, <laughs> I did end up working on three different versions, but uh, that is the one that ended up becoming uh, the definitive one, or at least almost. I changed a little bit of the poses there, but uh, the main, but the main part of that one sketch remained, like I repositioned the hands, but for example the faces uh, were directly taken from that one. Wait, I just said that wrong because as I'm looking at the recording, I actually combined much more elements from the three pictures, so just scratch that out, I'm not going to record it again. That is the version that I went with in the end. And this is the point where I lost about one and a half hours of footage. I mean, nothing important, some of the most interesting part of the process when I was uh, figuring out the colors themselves and just uh, roughly laid out how the entire composition is going to go. I knew I wanted uh, the house and the whole uh, Christmas get together behind them and I also wanted them to partially obscure a window that is going to light them up from the back and I wanted to create a contrast between cool colors and warm colors where the foreground and the characters and especially George is the one who appears the most cold, most cold, the coldest, speaking English very well, who appears the coldest on the entire picture and then Angelina is like a bridge between him and the get together going on in the background. I will talk about those exact choices in a minute. The thing that I was sure I recorded but apparently I didn't was uh, creating a reference in Does Studio, so I will just put it on the screen. Now most people will definitely say that uh, using 3D models as direct 
reference is mostly not something that you want to do, mainly because 3D models look extra stiff, even if you properly pose them, and when you are at the territory where you're properly posing 3D models the way they almost look finished, then what are you doing with drawing and painting, you should just do the 3D modeling instead. I was actually talking to a few people about this uh, a few days ago and I always say that when it comes to putting multiple people on the picture, the biggest thing that you can use 3D for is actually posing them together and uh, just checking how their uh, foreshortening and how their interaction and how their overlapping is going to go, if they are actually touching each other or overlapping each other or there are elements in the background that are at a certain distance that you want to keep in mind and then the characters are overlapping that part. It is something that the 3D models can really help you with and I will always say that anyone who hasn't tried does studio and uh, does human characters I, I really recommend it. It's uh, totally free and it has a free character models, I've been using it since like 2019 or something, please the studio sponsor me or something. 2019? No, actually I've been using them since like 2017 or something, I don't care. Moving on. Okay, what would a video be without tech issues? So, hi, I'm gonna be here with uh, my avatar form because uh, I'm still having some issues now. I'm still having issues with my internet and the issue is that my phone is my camera and I cannot connect it to my PC properly without internet so let's hope that I will uh, solve this issue by the time I uh, I finish this picture and uh, let me really quickly talk about the stage we are right now. Now this is uh, roughly what I wanted, I will definitely go on with the rendering because this is just uh, you know a sketch with some uh, flat colors and some lights and you know many things are uh, going to be changed. I originally wanted to have a firework in Angelina's hand because, you know, like she wanted to uh, use that firework to cheer him up by by using it together. But then I decided that, you know, that's like a loud activity and like they want some, some privacy with some uh, shared intimate moment between them. So I changed the firework to these mugs and the colors of the mugs also play into the story of this picture. I will explain in a moment. So for the, most of the scene and for most of George himself, what we have is a bunch of cool colors. Obviously in the middle of the night, the snow is not going to be this blue. It's more like going to be like gray and black and all that. But uh, what you see here is a conscious distortion of reality to show the coldness of the scene and also, you know, the angst and the feelings of uh, one of the characters. And therefore it is uh, not a coincidence that everything from the house to Angelina herself is filled with warm colors. Like there is still some warm color coming from the house itself where the celebration is taking place, but it cannot really reach George as he's uh, turning away from the house. And then comes Angelina who has a bunch of uh, yellow and red on her. It is the color scheme of her sweater and also these exact two colors appear on the mugs the red and the yellow, you know, the colors of warmth, the colors of fire. And she's kind of the bridge between the two worlds, the person who can uh, really bring uh, a moment of peace and a moment of, uh, if not happiness, a moment of uh, blissful grief to George in this situation. That is the main interaction that I wanted to show on this picture, this little personal story between the two characters. I still want to like mess around with the ambience a little bit, like I added this uh, yellow color to the black, this yellow bloom just to bring out especially Angelina's uh, silhouette because she's blending into the background uh, quite a lot. And I also want to add a bunch of snow and ice to this part of the roof so it can contrast her face 
and uh, you know uh, and George has this uh, more natural contrast with the dark background also just the particles the snow uh, flakes in the background are also going to the absence of these uh, particles between you and the characters is going to show you how close you are standing to them now the main light is not the one coming from the house it is actually the moonlight with the moon being out of the composition you can see it especially on Angelina's face and hair that there is a bunch of blue light coming from the front and the center the yellow light from the house uh, serves a story purpose and also it uh, helps to bring out the silhouettes of the characters see right now I'm still not sure how much it is going to change my prediction is that it's not going to change a lot but we will uh, go back into the recording and uh, see where we can go with this and now continuing with the rendering process here comes the long part of the thing where I don't have uh, that much to say that is like always a struggle when I, I will just fix up stuff and work on stuff and render the different materials and figure out these all sorts of these little little things through the entire picture I generally write a script if not for any other part than for this part uh, by all means but I just made some notes this time and I hope that it's going to be still comprehensible and like you know this is the part of the process where I can go with the chill things and I can just plug in a few fun things about the work while you are just looking at the cozy little uh, nice process of rendering it actually took me like uh, 10 days to complete this whole part almost yeah exactly 10 days I'm not entirely sure something along those lines and I've been you know working on and off it and I think that it uh, really came together in the end like I didn't want to just rush it and uh, regret many of my decisions later when I started I was actually thinking that maybe I will make one more Christmas painting this year but then I decided that okay no I really don't want to focus on this one or at least uh, this one big Christmas painting because I'm actually about to finish another smaller one but uh, I, that's not the part of this video I didn't want to just squish in one more Harry Potter picture at least not this year there are two little stories that I want to share here not even stories should I call them stories two little uh, things that I want to add to this process one of them is Angelina's sweater now Angelina has this iconic uh, Molly Weasley made sweater that every character receives in the series you know first time where Harry is celebrating Christmas in Hogwarts he also receives one of the sweaters that has his uh, name's main letter on the front of it and on this picture Angelina has one of those and obviously it is a it is a visual clue to identify her so I, I really wouldn't have really made it any other way maybe if uh, she doesn't have the sweater I would have given her a snitch as uh, an earring or a necklace or something to just just make the viewers identify her easier because you know uh, these two characters were uh, Quidditch uh, players they played in the same team and this is a thing that uh, connects them and can serve as a clue to identify Angelina but then I still went with this sweater and I was thinking that okay she is a part of the family if she has one of these and uh, when was the point where she actually received this sweater and there could be like an easier answer that she received it before this Christmas and she's wearing it again after she was invited for the get together despite the fact that Fred is no longer alive but the story that I kind of made up in my head is that uh, she was invited to this get together and then she received this sweater now because Molly Weasley was making all the sweaters for the people and maybe she would have felt uh, like strange if she made one less so she decided to make one for Angelina instead and give it to her as a gift uh, when she comes along for uh, the get together because uh, they wanted to invite her I don't actually remember uh, if it was like canon that Fred and Angelina were together for for a long time I might have just said something that is not accurate but anyways I have this uh, second meaning on the picture that Angelina is considered to be a family member or a close friend to the family close enough to receive one of these sweaters 
the other thing I wanted to say is actually after I started working on this picture and like uh, most of the composition and the story was already done, I started looking through uh, archive of our own. I started uh, looking uh, through archive of our own, searching for uh, fan fictions featuring George and Angelina together, and I accidentally found this one fan fiction. It is titled There I Will Stay With You Whirling by A. Sonora. I will leave a link in the description. It is uh, 700 and 500 words and uh, one chapter, so it's like something that you were meant to read in one sitting. And the reason I wanted to mention it is that uh, this story has an almost identical scene to this. Like I was reading the lead up to that scene and I was like, wait, that is going to sound exactly like how I made my picture, or not exactly, it's like a different location and the circumstances are also different, but they actually have a Christmas scene with the two of them together where George is staying outside in the snow and uh, Angelina is going out to see him and I'm not going to spoil the whole story if you want to read it. I just wanted to mention it by all means and uh, I think I will uh, send this picture uh, to the author of the story just to like hey here's a here's a random thing that I made that is exactly what, what, what you made and I, I, I promise it wasn't a ripoff. I don't know, maybe just this whole concept of this scene is something that uh, came to multiple people, that George is uh, obviously going to feel really bad when he's experiencing his first Christmas without Fred, and if Angelina is around then she might actually be a comfort for him, like they can share the grief together and make it a little more bearable than uh, how much it would be if they were all alone. And I almost find it fascinating how two of us thought about almost the exact same scene and both of us decided to turn it into a piece of creation, in my case it's a fan art and, uh, and in the other case it's a fan fiction, but still we accidentally managed to create almost the same thing without uh, knowing about the other person's work. Okay, here's a funny story for you. Ah, we didn't have internet for about four days. Four days? Wait, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, like five days. And the reason behind that is because the internet provider was doing some maintenance work and apparently there was one cable that they didn't screw back properly and that's why we didn't have the internet. That's why this video is forever tainted by technical issues. Well, it is what it is. Santa Claus brought back our internet so we are ready to go and I will say that this picture is done or like 99% done. I might go back a little bit and like do one or two little fixes. I have about uh, 12 to 13 hours on this picture. I'm not entirely sure because sometimes I just forgot to press the recording because the whole uh, camera setup thingy was uh, confusing me. Not that I wouldn't just forget it sometimes by myself. Anyways, I didn't go all in with the details, especially with the house itself. I decided to not blur anything from the background. You know, I, I made this decision, I talked about it in my uh, Halloween video, like the, the, the first Halloween video that I released in August, that I decided that I don't want to use Gaussian blur or any other blur anymore to hide the things that I didn't do. I'd rather simplify them or just release something with like visible brush strokes and just had made uh, abstraction instead of uh, trying to fake the details that are actually not there. So most of the background and the environment is uh, not entirely detailed and I decided to go with this version. We can still make out multiple people in the room with a Christmas tree. There is some artifact here. I might just fix it up a little bit. I, I might find even more if I look hard enough, but you know, the main thing, the most important thing on the picture, the two characters. First of all, I am really satisfied with their looks and with their interaction. Like these are uh, really not expressive faces, but I, I personally feel that you can see the emotions on them 
and you can see you can see this uh, moment of shared grief between them while uh, both of the characters are uh, dealing with it in a slightly different way. George has this rather passive and uh, almost hostile body language while not really uh, reacting to Angelina and she's just really gently coming in from the side and places a single hand of uh, support on his shoulder. I put much more snow on George, like you can see that uh, his sweater is literally covered to a degree, while Angelina only has a few like scattered flakes on her sweater. Also Angelina's hair, I didn't expect it to turn out this good. I'm not entirely sure how much it is recognizable as these uh, braids that I was looking for, but I'm happy with how they look and uh, I'm, I'm really happy to show the two light sources through this whole hair. That is really a thing that worked out really well in this picture. Also about the snow on the characters, uh, I, I'm, I'm not entirely sure if I told this story before but there is that uh, picture that I made in like 2019 if I remember correctly with uh, Luna and Hermione on the street on the train station and when I showed that picture for the first time to someone the immediate answer was Hermione has snow on her face that shouldn't happen unless she's already experiencing hypothermia and her face is literally cold enough to not melt the snow and I was just Aha, uh -huh. that's that's a really good information. <laughs> so I didn't make that issue. I obviously placed a bunch of snow on the hair and on the eyebrows of both characters. Also talking about snow, I kind of broke the thing I was talking about earlier just with the snow effect. So the, we have one layer of snow that was the original snow but that was meant to be a placeholder. This is a scatter brush with some motion blur effects. And then later I painted in a bunch of other snowflakes by hand and I used a small amount of Gaussian blur on them along with, you know, uh, coloring them in around the house area as if they were uh, lit up by the light that is coming from inside the house. I didn't want to make every single snowflake by hand, but I also didn't want to just use a scattering barrage for the whole thing and uh, this was the middle ground where I settled. See right now I don't really know how I feel about the end result in general so I think that I will go and edit the whole video until this point and I will get back with like a finer evaluation. And now for the final reveal of the series, we have all eight pictures on one screen. I just thought about it and realized that uh, the last two pictures that I made uh, take place in the 1990s and all of them take place in the 2000s, maybe except for uh, Hannah and uh, Neville here who are sitting in 2010. I don't know why I added that, it's just a quick observation. But yes, those are actually 16 Harry Potter characters, canon couples, non-canon couples, couples who are no longer together, couples who are still not together when the picture is, uh, is taking place. I'm trying to like squish something out from myself that I should say at this point when I'm, I'm just looking at this entire series that goes back to 2020. Uh, this one says uh, 2021 but it is the rework that was done in 2021. These were from 2020 and then first I was really uh, and I first really stayed close to the whole Thomas Kincaid inspired version. Then I did this double parter with uh, the two pictures that tell one story and I connected them uh, through the color scheme. And then I made this uh, almost uh, dreamlike flashback scene. And with the most recent one, we looked at the other side of the whole uh, experience when uh, instead of uh, the happy celebrations and the good memories we take a look at the grief that takes place uh, uh, on this holiday and how how even this grief can connect characters and there are many people who would say and will say that hey this is not really something that should be featured on a Christmas picture like it shouldn't be them being alone in the snow 
and uh, it shouldn't be George crying, but they should be celebrating and they should be seen when they are already moved on. And that is the point when I will say that, uh, okay, we can we can hide all these uh, emotions and uh, focus on the, 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 the festivities of the holidays. And, and that's the point when I will say that, okay, other people are going to do that and uh, nobody is going to make this exact artwork. I am the only one who could make this artwork this way that it is uh, featured on the screen and I don't think that a single minute of it was wasted. The same way I don't think that a single minute of the entire series was wasted. You can say that these are like tonally not consistent, that they have uh, different features, they have different atmosphere, they have, uh, they have a completely different feeling sometimes, but uh, the, the main thing that connects all of these, the characters themselves being there for each other, having all of these experiences, whether or not they are pleasant, these are all scenes and emotions worth exploring, and if you were here with me in my journey to do that, I am uh, really thankful and uh, thank you so much for watching. So with that I will uh, go with the cliché ending and will say that happy holidays for everyone and I wanted to upload uh, 52 videos this year, one for each week and if I upload this one that is going to be the 20th, but cliché or not I will say that uh, next year is going to be better, I will start with uh, finishing my Halloween series in January and I will uh, finish the Galentine's series that I uh, kind of discontinued last February, you know, with the 13 uh, witch paintings and then, and then, and then who knows, and then I will <laughs> use the footage for the 1 billion videos that I, I recorded and I will hopefully do it all with my new microphone and with my improved voice, you know, improvement one step at a time. Thank you for being here and have a nice day. And do some art and most importantly, don't forget to have fun while doing that. Farewell. Now I have a rough idea, rough idea. I have a really specific idea how it's going to go. By the way, am I in frame? I'm like leaning out from the frame. I have a pretty solid idea. Solid. What did I just say? Did I say solid in the last take? I said something else, right? I don't remember what I said. <laughs>